Okay. Shutting down. See you in a week. Just how pro is an iPad Pro? I know it's like the super clickbaity question that you see in basically every iPad Pro video out there, but I, I really want to find out. So for this episode of The Lab, we're going to be ditching the PC for an entire week. It's shut down. I've got all my peripherals just shoved out of the way, and we're only going to be working on the iPad. We're going to be doing editing on it. We're going to be answering emails and YouTube comments, managing the YouTube channel. We're going to be doing everything that I would normally do on my computer on this PC. I was up way too late last night making sure that everything that I needed to get done on my computer got done because maybe I'm being a little bit too skeptical but I, I'm just not sure I can do everything that I need to do with an iPad. At the beginning of today I was super skeptical on whether or not I was going to do everything that I needed to be able to do using only the iPad. I mean, I use my computer for everything and I was very, very skeptical that I would not be able to do what I needed to do. Day one was all about productivity. I didn't do any filming, any editing. It was just a typical Monday for me, which is answering emails, planning out videos, monitoring the performance of the video that hopefully went out that morning. It's a very, very basic day. So it was the perfect day to actually get acquainted with the iPad, download all the apps that I thought I was going to need and just start getting used to it. All right. So I have slid all of my PC peripherals out of the way. So I'm not tempted to use them. And so we will only be working with the iPad, the magic keyboard, the Apple pencil, and then we've got a nice little dongle right here, which should give me some more ports. And we've got another dongle here that is connecting my headphones to the iPad. And that's this week's setup. I will say this for productivity as a creator, somebody who is going to be editing, who's going to be managing video files, you definitely need the Magic Keyboard. You need that extra USB-C port. It isn't just a nice to have. Like, I don't think that the iPad would have been as usable as it was on this first day without it. So I'm running into what might be my first problem. I really won't know until I get into some more power intensive activities on this iPad. But look, I, I bought, I bought this dongle here because I am supposed to be able to plug the power cable into the dongle and have the power pass through into the iPad. The problem is if we turn on the iPad, it says, it says not charging right there. Now, if I double tap, we're at we've been at 92 percent charge for a while so it's not like it's it's not losing battery it's just not um it's not doing what it's supposed to do this was probably the only f big frustration that i had during the day I, upon closer inspection i was getting power delivery it just wasn't a lot it was enough to maintain the current battery level but it wasn't enough to actually increase it and charge it which is kind of what i wanted because i was afraid that with a lower power delivery that was only maintaining during productivity when i got into the heavier stuff like editing we were going to start draining the battery but i was able to get a fast charger from anchor same day delivery and uh, i tried it out and it's all hooked up right now actually and it works great first impressions right now are pretty good i mean if even if the stuff that i would need to do as a creator didn't pan out with the ipad it's still powerful enough to use as a productivity device like if i was going out of town or if i was going to be traveling around all day i could see myself only taking the ipad and not really needing anything else so first impressions are good but we'll see what tomorrow brings
The main task of today was editing. It was getting the footage that I shot yesterday onto the iPad and begin editing. And to be honest, I actually ran into a couple of issues just with the getting the footage onto the iPad part. I thought that would be easy. You just stick the SD card in the SD card slot on the dongle and there you go. iPad picks it up. You transfer the files over. I know how to do that. I discovered that dongles, or at least this dongle, did not work with the USB-C port in the Magic Keyboard. And at first I was like, okay, that's fine. We'll just move that dongle over to the USB-C port on the iPad and we'll move the headphones over to the Magic Keyboard. But that's when I found out that the headphones also don't work with the Magic Keyboard. It seems like the USB-C port on the Magic Keyboard is purely for charging purposes, which kind of took away from the utility of it. I mean, it's still an amazing thing. It basically turns the iPad into a laptop, but the fact that that USB-C port was only for charging purposes did take away from the magic of the Magic Keyboard a little bit. I ended up pulling out a dongle that I had, uh, I've had for a while, actually, since I, I first laid my hands on the iPad and uh, it just plugs into this port right here and it's got a headphone jack as well as all the card readers and ports that I need and that allows me to put the charging port directly into the iPad through the Magic Keyboard and I still have enough ports for everything else. The sponsor of this video is LumaFusion and we're going to be using LumaFusion to do all of the editing for this entire video. Anytime you hear me talking about editing, I'm editing in LumaFusion. Now, because this is a sponsored video, this is not a review. I'm just going to highlight some of the tools that I found particularly helpful. First of all, getting up and running was super, super easy. You literally just open up the app and you're ready to go. It, it was absolutely f fantastic. And before you get started, they actually have a little pop up that shows up that asks you if you want to watch a tutorial before you get started. So you kind of jump in with some knowledge of how the app works. Now, at first, I decided that I wasn't going to do that. I would just jump in and see what I could find. I quickly found that that was a very big mistake. It's not that LumaFusion is difficult to use. In fact, it's really not difficult to use. I, it was just a different workflow than I'm used to and I was having a hard time wrapping my brain around it. So I went and I watched their tutorials, which it, they're probably the best like official tutorials from an, a, a, a video editing app maker that I've ever seen. And when I was done, I felt like I could do anything that I needed to do. All the basic editing tools were there and the, I that's what I was focused on was just cutting the footage together and just really getting a feel for not only LumaFusion, but also what it's like editing on an iPad. Cause I'm used to working with two like pretty large 4K monitors and keyboards and mice and all these peripherals. And, and now I'm just using a magic keyboard and an iPad. It was kind of tough to get used to, to be honest. I'm not used to working on such a small screen. I'm not used to working with such a small keyboard or without my tour box or just any of that stuff. It was actually, uh, it took a little bit to get used to. And to be honest, I'm still getting used to that, but this is my first day editing on an iPad. So I'm gonna give myself a break on that one. All in all, day two was a success. I didn't feel the need to turn on my computer to do anything. I was able to get everything done that I needed to get done. I got my footage cut. I started learning about editing on an iPad and I got some, I'm starting to get some ideas of where the iPad can really fit in in a professional production. We'll talk about that later. I'm about to conduct an interview for the next episode of Creative Minds, and I'm doing it all on the iPad, and it's making me a little nervous because I'm not using Zoom. I'm using a, a different app, a very specific app that I actually have to use. So I'm really, really nervous because I've never used this app on the iPad before. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know. I'm, I'm concerned. We may have to... We may have to turn on the PC if this doesn't work. The interview actually went great. The app that I needed to use worked absolutely fine, even though it was an iPhone app that I was using on an iPad. The only issue really that I had was the fact that I can't use an external camera with 
the iPad. That's kind of tough. So I, I wouldn't be able to do any live streaming. I mean, I could live stream from the iPad, but I, I wouldn't want to. I really like having a high quality camera for uh, for live streaming. And also if I want to do remote interviews, I have to record my camera and my microphone externally in order to get the quality that I want. After the interview, I jumped back into LumaFusion and started editing yesterday's footage. And I can already feel myself getting more comfortable with the iPad as an editing machine. I'm, I'm working my way around a little bit more comfortably. I'm learning the keyboard shortcuts in LumaFusion, which is a huge time saver. I even jumped into color and audio a little bit, and I'm not gonna lie, LumaFusion doesn't have everything that I would look for as far as editing is concerned, as far as color and audio are concerned, but they do have what you need in order to put together a decent looking and decent sounding video. So that was a, a nice little, uh, that, that was nice. All in all, it was a successful day. It was a pretty straightforward, simple day. I didn't do anything out of the ordinary. The only thing close to out of the ordinary I did was that interview, but like I said, that worked fine. Tomorrow though, Tomorrow we're going to be trying some new things. I've been a little bit too nice on the iPad so far. Everything I've done, I've, I've, I've been plugged into the charger. I've had it set up kind of like a desktop where I'm just sitting at my desk and doing things. But I, this is supposed to be a portable device, right? Which means I'm not always going to be, I'm not always going to be connected to a charger. So today, today we're going off the charger. We're going to see how far we can push this thing. Uh, before it dies because that's going to be super important because the way that I'm thinking I might want to use this iPad there's just there's just no way I can be connected to a charger all day long this should be interesting so it's day four at this point right and I, I know I know the iPad at this point I know the apps that I'm going to be using I know kind of my workflow with footage and photos and all of that stuff and now it's time to start putting the iPad through its paces and so today I wanted to test the battery life and see how it would perform as an on-the-go device which is you know kind of what it's designed to be. I started off doing all of my normal stuff, checking email, going through my YouTube comments, going through social media, all of that stuff. And that took me about an hour. And at the end of that, I was at 99% battery, which isn't bad at all. I was actually very, very pleased. And then I went and cut all of my footage from yesterday. And by the time I was done with that, it took me about an hour. I was at about 82%, which was, you know, pretty nice for video editing. So, you know, based on that, I was thinking, you know, you could probably get a decent day of editing, a decent round of editing in on this battery, which is good because tomorrow I plan on putting this thing through more of a real world production scenario. Once I was done cutting my dailies, I actually decided to switch directions a little bit and focus on audio. I recently started a podcast with a couple bandmates of mine and I wanted to see how the iPad would perform as a podcast editing device, which means, you know, cleaning up the audio and making it sound good and also, you know, cutting together uh, an actual episode and making it the way that I would normally make it on my computer. And the first app that I brought my files into was an app called Mic Swap Multitrack Pro, which allows you to bring in all of your audio tracks and make them sound like they were recorded on a completely different microphone, which was super, super cool. You can also, you know, tweak the levels and do panning it left and right and adding reverb and all sorts of stuff. And it's really, you can make your audio sound pretty good with it. And then from there, I sent it to an app called Audio Master, which gives me the ability to give my entire podcast kind of a final sound. And that's super easy to use and it produces great results. And honestly, if all I had to do with my podcast was make the audio sound good and I didn't really have to cut up anything and and take out ums and ahs and long pauses and all that stuff then those two apps would have been perfect but unfortunately I did have to cut out ums and ahs and long periods of silence and I needed to trim stuff and it, it there was some work to be done so after doing a bit of research I settled on Ferrite Recording Studio by all accounts that I came across that seemed to be the best app for the iPad 
for podcast editing. And to its credit, it probably is. It lets you do all sorts of stuff. I mean, I can automatically strip the silence away from all of the audio files. I can move things around really easily. There's, I can add effects and compression and noise reduction and EQ and just everything that I need to do, I can do with the Ferrite Recording Studio. So I ended up doing the whole podcast on that and that was pretty cool. Quick update, it is currently about 10 minutes to two, so we have been off the charger for almost five hours now, and battery is at 14%. Honestly, I kinda wish that the battery would have lasted a little bit longer. I mean, granted, I was editing videos and podcasts and making thumbnails in Canva and checking YouTube comments and email and social media, I, I really did put this battery through its paces. Still, battery life is something to keep in mind if you're gonna be on the go all day and just using the iPad, you might wanna think about bringing your charger and probably some sort of external battery. After four days, I'm really starting to enjoy having this iPad. I even did some Xbox cloud gaming on it today, which was just, amazing but even beyond that i'm just starting to really see the benefits of having one of these things around but tomorrow tomorrow is kind of a big test we're going to put this in a production scenario we'll see what happens today's the day we are putting the ipad through a real world scenario super super excited about this i've got everything set up right here we're ready to go Gonna be, uh, gonna be shooting an episode of scenes today with the help of the iPad. The big goal for today was to shoot the short for the next episode of scenes. If that didn't make sense, that means you're not subscribed to the channel. So click that subscribe button. There were definitely some obstacles that I had to overcome. One of which was the fact that I was shooting myself by myself on a camera that didn't have continuous autofocus. And the iPad was actually the perfect tool to help with that. One of my favorite things about this iPad is actually the, the Bluetooth Plus app from Blackmagic Design, which allows me to control my Pocket Cinema Camera 6K directly from the iPad, which is key when you're shooting a project by yourself and you're filming yourself because you definitely need this to help you pull focus on yourself. So very, very handy. There is sort of an Android version, but it's third party and it hasn't been updated in a while and it, it doesn't work very well. So this thing, this thing is great. I can start and stop recording. I can control everything on my camera right from here. The Bluetooth app worked almost perfectly. And when I say almost, I mean that when the iPad was in range of the camera, everything worked great. There were absolutely no issues. But the problem was it was super easy for the iPad to get out of range of the camera. In fact, all it took was like a closed door and I lost the connection. So it worked and it only caused a problem in a couple of the shots that I was doing, but it also means that on larger shoots, controlling the Pocket 6K from another room with the iPad isn't really a viable or reliable option. And I'm not blaming the iPad for this, by the way. I don't know if it's the iPad or the app or the camera, but somewhere in that chain, something isn't working the way that I think it should. So we may have to find other options if I ever go out on bigger shoots with this camera. Where the iPad did help out a lot was in the productivity, keeping track of my shot list and taking notes when something popped up that I needed to remember later. It was really handy having this thing around. And yes, I could have done all that stuff from my phone, I get it, but having that larger screen is actually really useful. I didn't think it would be, but you know, it was. All in all, the shoot went great. I don't think I could have gotten it done by myself without the iPad. So it was a huge help there. And again, the productivity side of things was just absolutely fantastic. So what are my final thoughts on the iPad? Is this something that I could see myself using as like my primary computing device? No, absolutely not. That I just have way too much stuff that I do that requires the use of an actual computer like Unreal Engine, DaVinci Resolve, and Adobe Audition, and the Isotope plugins, and just all sorts of stuff that I just can't do 
on an iPad. But does this mean that the iPad has no place in a video production workflow? Absolutely not. I mean, over the last week, I've used this thing to write scripts, answer emails, check social media, manage my YouTube channel, manage shot lists, and just all sorts of things that are absolutely necessary when you're running a YouTube channel or when you're producing videos. Plus, you've got LumaFusion, and while I wouldn't see myself necessarily editing a short film on it, it has all of the tools that I need in order to cut daily which is a super important part of a multi-day shoot. And with their XML export feature, you can easily throw together your dailies and then export an XML timeline and then bring it in to Final Cut or Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve when you get back to your computer. In fact, that's how I did this video. I was editing the dailies as I went and then when I was all said and done and the experiment was over and I could turn my computer on again, I exported an XML from LumaFusion, brought it into DaVinci Resolve, and I finished up the edit. But there is a version of this video that I edited completely in LumaFusion. It's basically the version of this video before I brought it into DaVinci Resolve. It's got more stuff in there, it's a little bit longer, and it's pretty good. If you wanna check that out, all you gotta do is click the join button below this video and sign up to become a channel member. Channel members get access to extended and uncut versions of my videos members only live streams and all of the presets and LUTs that I create. So if that sounds like something that you'd be into, make sure you click that join button, sign up today. We'd love to have you. All right, final verdict time. Is the iPad something, being an Android guy and a Windows guy, is the iPad Pro something that I could see myself picking up for myself? Let's put it this way. This is the 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro with one terabyte of storage. It's got the Magic Keyboard and the Apple Pencil. This is what Apple sent me so I could make this video. I unfortunately have to send this back. And this is the 12.9 inch M1 MacBook Pro with one terabyte of storage. It's got the Magic Keyboard and the Apple Pencil. And this one's mine. Thanks for watching. <laughs>